Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? Thank you so much for waiting on the Lord for all these days. We just have two more days to go. And I think it has been a good time. It has been a thrill all over the place. And I believe that the Lord has been good to us. And today, we are going to mainly focus on our awesome God, reminding us that he's a consuming fire. I be believe that even as we, we, we begin to unpack it, you'll be able to understand it so, so well. But I believe that we shall have a great time in his presence, both in person and those online, where, wherever you are. I believe that this is a time for you and I to, to connect with our Father in heaven. And just before we start, let us just usher in his presence again in worship and in song.
without you we're nothing, Lord. Without you we're nothing, Lord.
Jesus, we ask you to pour your spirit out on us, O oh God. Lord, this afternoon we call upon that holy name, that name that is high and powerful, that name that is high above any other name, the name that is ascribed to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, to the great I Am. spirit out once again on us oh God we need a fresh anointing of your presence in our lives we need a fresh anointing of you in our lives oh Lord Father without you we are nothing Lord we need you more than the air that we breathe we need you more than anything in our lives oh God Father yes in the mighty name of Jesus oh God Lord we lay down our crowns before you and we just want to enthrone you as the king and as the Lord of our lives oh God the great I am oh God Father, we just want to give you glory. We want to give you honor. We want to give you praise because there is none like your God. And Lord, we just want to say thank you for who you are and who you are in our lives, oh God. We just want to bless you. We want to honor your God and say, Jesus, Jesus, you are a consuming fire. And we come before your God in reverence. We come before your God in humility. We come before your God in worship, in adoration of God. For Father, yes, there is none like your God. Yes, Jesus, there is none like you. We exalt your God. Lord, we just want to worship you this afternoon. And we want to declare and remind your God that, Lord, you are the Lord of our lives. You are our Savior. You are King of God. And Father, we just want to bless you and say thank you, Jesus for who you are, Lord. We bless you, King of glory. We bless you, Jesus. Father, we ask you this afternoon that, Lord, may you pour your spirit out on us, oh God. Lord, may there be a fresh anointing. May we not walk out the way we came. May we not listen just like the way we did in the start. But I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that your spirit, oh God, shall speak in the inside of us, oh God. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus, that we shall be anxious by your spirit, that we shall be led by your spirit, direct and instruct by your spirit. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus, us, oh God. Father, we just want to say thank you, Jesus. We bless you. We bless you because we know that you're here with us today and you want to meet us in such a special way. We, we, we thank you, Jesus, and we just give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't we give Jesus a big hand clap of praise for who he is? I just want to invite all of us in person and in air, I mean and uh, online for this afternoon bit. I mean we just want to reflect on this awesome God who is a consuming fire. Who is a consuming fire? There's no one like him. There's no one like him. He is the only consuming fire that we actually know of. And when he speaks about the consuming fire, you need to, 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 to think about two, two things. We are speaking of, about a God who is jealous. He shares his throne with no one. No one at all. No one at all. And then number two, he's a God who is a consuming fire because he fights for us our battles. He is Jehovah Nisi. He deals with the things that are inside of us and the things that are against against whatever he has designed for you and me. And this afternoon, we just want to take time and just pray through that. And I believe that God will be able to answer us as we continue to wait on him. But just before we get in, into that place, I think the Lord has been good. Today is day 38. 38. Two days to go. Two days to go. 
And uh, I am sure that for, for some of us, it's going to become a lifestyle. Yeah, don't just wait for, for the two days and then you say, now we are back. And it has all oh, you've been hired. No. Okay, so you just ensure that let the Lord speak to you. Some of us, this is a time of great revival in your life. This is a time of great revival in our families. This is a time of great revival in places of work. I believe that God wants to do such an amazing thing. So I just pray right now that if we can, let's just enter into his presence with thanksgiving giving and just give thanks to God and tell him God thank you for wh who you have been to me throughout these days even at this time thank you for the grace thank you for strength th th thank you Lord that Lord you have been speaking to me the miracles and the testimonies that have been happening why don't you just speak to your father in heaven and just thank him Lord, we, we, we want to, to say thank you so much for the fact that you brought each of us, oh God. Lord, we thank you for your spirit who has been with us all the way through. Even the times when we felt like giving up, Lord, you are able to uphold us, oh God. And well, Lord, we just want to say thank you so much for the testimonies that are happening and occurring within the lives of people. Testimonies of healing, testimonies of deliverance, testimonies of provision, testimonies of love and for care. Making us and, and just reminding us, oh God, that you're so mindful of us, oh God, that you so care about each of us, oh God. And we we just want to say thank you so much for your goodness and for your love that has surrounded us, oh God, in our families, in our homes, in our places of work, oh God. Father, you've been good. You've been so faithful, oh God. And we just want to give you praise. We just want to give you honor and adoration for who you are, oh God. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, let's give Jesus a big hand clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you Jesus. So today, our main, main, main focus is on God being an awesome God and a consuming fire. Consuming fire has to do with His holiness 
and worship. I don't know what comes into your mind when I ask you a few of these questions. Where do you spend most of your time? Where do you spend most of your money? Where do you get your joy from? What is always in your mind? What is always in your mind? Friends, anything that takes up the place of God becomes an idol. Anything that takes up the place of God becomes an idol. And this is what the scriptures say. Exodus 20. It says, You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous God. Who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods? I let the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected. Even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. God is a consuming fire. When it comes to anything to do with holiness and worship, anything to do with his throne, there is no compromise he can have in that place. The second scripture that I want to read from us is from Deuteronomy chapter 4. That says, so be careful not to break the covenant the Lord your God has made with you. Do not make idols of any shape or form. For the Lord your God has forbidden this. The Lord your God is a devouring fire. He is a jealous God. We are speaking about God who is a consuming fire. I believe that probably in your own life and probably this is a time to reflect what are some of those idols that we have upheld in our lives? What are some of those idol practices that we have upheld in our lives? You know them. Some of them, we c carry those things around about our necks. We have them tattooed on our, our bodies. Some of those things, we have them even around our waists. An idol of identity. Today we have traded who we are in Christ Jesus for other things. Your work could be an idol whereby every time you are just after work, 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 work. Your skills could become an idol. Your Abilities could become also an idol. Your achievements in life may be an idol. It may be money or material things of this world. It could be your job or it could be your status in society. Maybe your physical appearance has become an idol to you that you actually spend more time dealing with yourself and rather than spending time with God. It could be the aspect of entertainment where you're glued so much to TikTok social media, and Netflix, and everything you follow day by day. It could be sex in the names of pornography, masturbation, or you're just addicted to the aspect of sex. It could be the area of comfort where you do not want the Holy Spirit to disorganize you in any way, but you just want to have everything in your comfort zone. That could be an idol. It could be an aspect of, of your phone. These days they say a phone sticks closer. Uh, it sticks closer than your brother. It could be your phone and you're just addicted to it. It could be your family, that your family has even 
taken up the place of God in your life, or it could be your children or your wife. What is it? It could be probably an aspect of influence or fame that today you worship influence and fame, what you have in the inside of you. Or it could, it could be even those wall hangings that we have in our houses with the pictures of men of God or women of God, whatever it is. Whatever takes the place of God is an idol. And this God that we are speaking about is a consuming fire. And I believe that as I was sharing in your hearts and in your minds, probably some of those things came up. And what I would want us to do right now is to just take a time to repent and tell God whatever we have made to be an idol in our lives. Father, we choose to denounce those things to in the name of Jesus. Why don't we just take time and pray to God? Just take a time to repent and lay those things before God right now. We choose to repent, oh God. Lord, we choose to repent, oh God. Lord, search us, search us, Holy Spirit, oh God. Oh God, I pray. Lord, have mercy on us, oh God. Have mercy on us, oh God, where we have made idols, idols of God, oh God. Lord, for forgive us for those idolatry practices, oh God, of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus, in our individual life. too small in our eyes. Lord, we are asking for your forgiveness this very day. Lord, we choose to repent. We choose to repent, oh Jesus. Oh God, we choose to repent and denounce those idols in our lives. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, oh Lord, Holy Spirit. We choose to withhold nothing, oh God. We choose to withhold nothing, oh Jesus. Oh God, Father, yes, in the mighty name of Jesus, this very day, may you be enthroned in our hearts, oh God. May you be enthroned in our lives, oh Jesus. Lord, we call upon that name, oh Jesus, oh God. We pray, we choose to denounce, oh God, whatever is exalted, its name high above yours, whatever we have chosen, we have chosen to exalt high above your name. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. The Lord, today may you take your rightful place, oh God. Take your rightful place, oh Jesus. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God.
Father, we, we come to you in, in repentance. Lord, we come to you in repentance, O oh God, this day. Lord, your word says, O oh God, that there will come a time and, they come, and the time has come where you shall look for those who will worship you and in, in spirit and in truth. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, that Lord, where we have chosen to believe in a lie, we ask you to forgive us, oh God, this very day in the name of Jesus. Lord, where we have not worshipped you in spirit and in truth, we are asking, oh God, to forgive us. Where we have been double-minded, oh God, where we have, where we have, where, where we have been complacent, oh God, with the things of God, we are asking you to forgive us this very day in the name of Jesus. Father, we you just come before you and we pray that, Lord, may you take your rightful place in our hearts, oh God, in our lives, oh Jesus, oh God, in our families, oh God, we are asking you to take your rightful place in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Father, I pray, oh God, that once again, oh God, may our hearts be broken before you. Lord, may we become vulnerable before you. Lord, I pray that we shall choose to abandon ourselves before you and say, Holy Spirit, have your way. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Father, you are the one that we are yearning for. You are the one that we are longing for. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, oh God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that this very day, that Lord, may you consume every idol that we have upheld in our families, oh God, in our, in, in our personal lives. We pray that, Lord, you is the consuming fire. Consume that in the mighty name of Jesus. Remove that appetite that we may have had in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. We pray that this very day that we shall experience a release by your spirit and by your power. And we are asking, oh God, that let your will be done in our hearts, oh God, just as it is in heaven. I pray that your will and plans, oh God, shall be upheld, oh Jesus. Lord, we just want to say thank you. We want to bless you. We want to honor your God and just give you all the glory, all the honor and the praise because today we choose to enthrone you. Today we choose to enthrone you as the King of Kings, as the Lord of Lords of our hearts, oh God, or as, as the Lord of Lords of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we just want to say thank you and we bless your God in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everyone say, eh? This is what John chapter 4, verse 23 says, But the time is coming indeed. And I tell you what, guys, it has come. It's here now. When true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The time is now. The time is now, and God is, is calling you and I to, to, to that place of true worship, where we can worship him in spirit and in truth. And it's the only way that we shall uphold God as our Father, as our God, as our King, and as our Lord. The second thing that I thought that we should pray for today, that was really in my mind. We have an enemy. And this enemy, by the way, is not even the devil, but this enemy is sin. Sin. Sin in our hearts, sin in our lives. Sin will destroy God's plan for you and me. Anything that is not aligned to his purpose for our lives is an idol. But God is a consuming fire that is more than able to deal with the sin in our lives by us just totally surrendering to this Father in heaven. And this is what the scriptures say in Deuteronomy 3, I mean 9, 3, it says, But be assured today that the Lord your God is the one who goes across of you like a devouring fire. He will destroy them. He will subdue them before you and you will drive them out and alienate them quickly as the Lord has promised you. God wants to deal with anything that comes in, in, in the way of fulfilling his purpose in our lives. And right now, I, I would, I would just ask us to just, just take time to surrender whatever it is to him and say, God, this very day, I surrender to you. 
because I know that you are Jehovah Nisi, the Lord who fights for us our battles. He's the one who fights for us our battles at home, at work, wherever you are. God fights for you your battles. And let us just raise our hearts to this consuming fire. Call God and say, God, just intervene in the situations in my life. Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 12, 1 says, we need to offer our bodies as living sacrifices unto the King of Kings, holy and pleasing to him, that every day he will be able to do a good work in the inside of us. And Father, I want to pray in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, the Lord even as we pray this afternoon, we are asking, oh God, that Father, you shall be our true sacrifice. I pray that Lord, oh, our bodies shall be holy and pleasing to your God. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, in everything that we do, I pray that holiness shall prevail in the inside of God because God, you have called us to a place of holiness. You have called us to be holy because you are holy, oh God. Without holiness, we cannot say God. But I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, that this very day, that because you gave sin a death blow on the cross, I pray that Father, it shall be a true experience in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Father, Lord, we just raise our voices to you this afternoon and we are asking you, you, oh God, that Lord, may you have your way in the inside of us, oh God, even as we raise our hearts to you. I pray that Jesus, that you may give us a fresh passion for your name. Give us a fresh, a, a fresh passion for the kingdom of God. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, refine us, oh God, fire. Refine us, oh Jesus, oh God. Give us a passion for your name, oh God. Father, anoint us afresh in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, that our desire, our will shall be to do the will of our Father in heaven, oh God. Father, we just want to bless you and we want to honor your God. We thank you so much for your goodness. We, 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 we thank you for your love and we thank you because we know that you're with us here. And Lord, we just want to exalt your God and we just want to magnify that name high above any other name, King of Glory. We, 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 we thank you, Jesus. I will ask all of us to stand to our feet as I pray right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we want to say thank you because you are a holy God. We say thank you because you are Lord. You are Savior. You are King. You are Master. There is nothing that we can do without your God. 
And Lord, this very day, we have prayed and said, Lord, we enthrone you again in our hearts. We enthrone you again in our hearts. We enthrone you again in our homes. We enthrone you again in our plans, oh God. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus, we choose to acknowledge you in everything that we do. And we ask you to take your rightful place in the name of Jesus. I pray that this very day, the Lord, you may give us a passion for your name. You may give us a passion for the kingdom. You may give us a passion to do your will, oh God. I pray, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, give us a fresh anointing. Lord, revive us from the inside out, oh God. And Father, we pray that may we be true disciples, true advocates of the kingdom of God wherever we go. And may your presence always be with us, oh Lord, King of glory. Cast us not away from your presence, oh Lord, but renew within us a right spirit, one that will choose to obey your will, one that will choose to obey and walk in your purposes, oh God, for our lives in the name of Jesus, oh God. And one that will not give into the forces of sin. We thank you that on our own we cannot do it, but by your spirit, all things are possible. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone says amen and amen. Let's go into a time of song right now. Thank you.
your hands lifted up. is holy and because he's holy he expects us to be holy I want us just in a few minutes just to exalt his name because of his holiness because of his purity is the source of our confidence oh God Lord because you are holy and perfect oh God you are pure and holy Lord that's why you deserve to be worshipped oh God none can ever be compared to you Lord because of your purity, Lord, because of your holiness, O oh God, is where perfection of life comes from, O oh God. That's why this afternoon, Lord, we are meditating, O oh God, on our some God, Lord, who is holy and pure, who is mighty and great, Lord, who is sovereign in all his ways, O oh God. We bless your name, O oh God, because of your holiness, because of your purity. We thank you because of who you are to us, Lord. In Jesus' name, go ahead and give God a clap offering for his uh, an awesome God to us. Amen. Even as Pastor Wilson has been leading us in that prayer moment, I don't know what you are getting. Our God is a consuming fire. He mentioned about God being a consuming fire. Because he's holy. And because our God is holy, in him there is no sin. He is perfect. And we whom is drawing us to himself, he wants us also to remain pure as he is. And he's the one who does it in us. You know, as much as God loves us, he cannot be not himself. He's the holy God. And when we draw closer to him, the only thing we thank God that he can cause us to be tolerated in his presence is the blood of Jesus. We clap for that. The blood of Jesus purifies us and enables us to access his throne of mercy. And because of that, there are things that he demands of us. We are going to pray for the church. Tell your neighbor, we are praying for the church. Yes, in the church, the assembly of God's people must also honor God by being holy before him. We are reading Hebrews, fellow. We are going to read from verse 18. He says, You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire, to darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast, or to such a voice speaking words, that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them. Because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. Pause a bit there. Even in Moses, the servant of the Lord, what did he do? He was trembling with fear. Because he was in the presence of the mighty one. Let's continue. But, thank God, you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in the joyful assembly. To the church, which is church of the firstborn, whose names are done what? written in heaven. 
you have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous, made perfect. To Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See to it. This is a, a warning to us that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him, who warned them on earth? How much less will we, if we turn away from him, who warns us from heaven? At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised. Once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably. These are key words for us when we're praying for the church. I'm reading it again. And so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe for our God is what? A consuming fire. We need to know whom we have in our midst. Is God Almighty. He deserves all the worship. He's a holy God. And the church, we are a body of Christ. God expects us through the blood of Jesus to remain pure and holy. The only way we are going to bring praise to God, the only way we are going to magnify his name, we, the living temple of God, is to remain in holiness, is to remain in purity. As we are embracing this year 2024, we are going to call upon that blood may wash us clean as a child, may purify us and perfect us, so that we may enjoy the fellowship we have with the Father. He has a lot in store for us, but what hinders him is the way we operate. Come on, rise up on your feet and go before God. Ask the Lord God Almighty to release that blood upon you, upon us as a congregation, upon us as a church, oh God. You are consuming fire because of your holiness, Lord, because of your perfection, O oh God, and because of who you are, Lord. Lord, we tremble. Moses trembled with fear. Lord, when he came into your presence, and your presence, O oh God, was symbolizing, Lord, holiness was symbolizing, O oh God, perfection, O oh God, was symbolizing, O oh God, purity, Lord, even those that you have called, O oh God, even when we come with fellowship, O oh God, if when we come to congregate, Lord, we should always remember that we are assembling, Lord, before the mighty one, O oh God, who is just extending his grace to us, Lord, so that he may work in us, Lord, to perfect us, Lord, to sanctify us, O oh God. Come on, go ahead and ask the Holy Spirit of God to work in you so that in the sanctifying process of God may perfect you, may purify you from every idol, from every impurity, from every imperfection. Lord, as we call call upon you, we know you are in our midst, oh God, to accomplish your purposes, oh God, in our very own lives, Lord. As we surrender to you this afternoon, Lord, may you have your way in us, oh God. And Lord, may you have your way in our families, Lord. May you have your way in our cells, Lord. May you have your way in our churches, oh God. The Lord, the continual cleansing, Lord, of your power. May you continue to perfect your church, oh God. Many times, Lord, we have obliged you, Lord, with our familiarity, Lord. Live forgetting, Lord, that you are above everything, oh God. You are supreme, oh God. You are sovereign, oh God. And Lord, in your holiness, oh God, we wouldn't have accessed it, oh God, if it was not the blood of Jesus, oh God. Lord, as a church, Lord, we whom you died for, Lord, we whose names are written in the book of life, Lord, we will always remain thankful, oh God, before you, our Father, before you, our Master, oh God, before you, our Redeemer, Lord. Lord, if there is anyone who is thankful, oh God, it is us, the church, Lord. It is us, the body of Christ, oh God. It is us whose names, oh God, are written in the book of life, Lord. Lord, it is your blood that causes our names, oh God, to enter your book of life, Lord. Otherwise, oh God, we would be dead. Otherwise, oh God, we would 
not be where we are. That's why, Lord, we want to say thank you. Continue working in us, oh God, your perfection process. That we may be where we want to be, oh God. Oh, we thank you. If there is anything I have captured from that text you have read, this is what my take home is. Our God, he loves us so much, but as much as he loves us, he's a holy God. And as a church who are representing Christ in the community, at the marketplace, people who look at us, they might see that reflection of what? Perfection in us. And we are crying out to God in these 40 days, perfect me, Lord, in my relationship with you. The church, there is a mistake at times that we do. We mistake the love of God and we become familiar with God. God, you cannot familiarize God. God is on the other side. He's a holy God. But it is his love that draws us to him. And as we do this, we should run away from compromises. We should run away from sin. We should run away from things that cause us to be brought down and look up to God. If Moses could tremble with fear, he saw what was in God. Even us, who have not come to that mountain that is shook and people die, who have come to the grace and mass of God, but the grace is there to perfect us. I want you just to lift up your hands to God as I lead you in this prayer of agreement. What a holy God we have in our midst. Lord, the children of Israel were warned. We have also received this warning that as a church general, as a body of Christ general, Lord, may you have mercy upon us where we have acted in a way that has not glorified you. We are, Lord, who have conducted ourselves, Lord, with the familiarity, without recognizing your holiness in our midst. May you forgive us, Lord. May you have mercy upon us, O oh God. Many times, Lord, Paul was warning the church, and they say, be holy, because God is holy. Lord, may that consume us, Lord, this year in whatever we are going to do, in whatever relationship we're going to find ourselves, may you enable us to remain in purity, Lord. May you enable us, Lord, even where we are working, oh God, may we remain not corrupted, oh God, by what is going around us, Lord, because we are chosen. We are a royal priesthood, Lord. We are your ambassadors, oh God. We are your people, Lord, chosen to bring honor and glory to your name, Lord. Help us, Lord. As we do this, in Jesus' name, David, come. Lord, we are ready to see a miracle. Lord, we are ready to watch your glory fall. Lord, we're 
Strongholds of bold, our God is more. Believing, believing, breakthrough is coming. Strongholds of calling, our God is more. We believe it, believe it. This is what the scripture says in Psalm 51 and verse 6. It says, Purify me for my sins and I will be clean. I think that is our prayer today that will, God will make you and I clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. My praise that God will give us back our joy today. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice that each of us will rejoice because of what God has done in our lives. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Praise that God will give us a loyal spirit to him and to his will for our lives. Do not banish me from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Re restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels and they'll return to you. We are vessels that God has chosen to extend his holiness in the entire place. In your office place, your home, wherever you go, God is using you and he wants to use you. And I pray that God will cause us to be loyal to his will, to his purposes, and to who he is in our lives. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone say, Amen. Just a few reminders. I want to say thank you so much for having come today in person and those um, on social media platforms. We want to say thank you so much for plugging in. 
Tomorrow we'll be here in the morning again and at lunch time. You don't want to miss because we are crowning the things, okay? And then on Friday, Friday, you, you tell your neighbor Friday, 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 10 a.m. It is starting time, okay? Not arrival. 10 a.m. at Chengera. I don't know, but I feel the grounds of Uganda are going to shake on that day. When we all meet together, the presence of the Lord is going to be there with such a power and a move of the Holy Spirit because he's doing a new thing, not just in Watoto, but through Watoto and for the good of the entire country. Thank you so much and God bless you guys so richly for having come. Have a good day. Lord, we raise